And then a few years ago, I learned that there was an unnatural amount of aluminum in the soil and that there was a program spraying aluminum and other heavy metals up into the atmosphere. And so I wanted to check it out. And that's the first way that chemtrails showed up for me. Basically, chemtrails is a geoengineering program where airplanes fly at high altitudes and they spray chemicals into the atmosphere, including aluminum, barium, and strontium. <coughs> and then those metals fall to the ground and they land in our bodies, on the soil, in our trees, in our food, and in our water. To control Many the population. Chemtrails with the normal jet contrails. The difference is that the uh, normal jet contrails actually dissipate within minutes while the heavy metals in the chemtrails cause those trails to persist for hours. And um, it's not a hypothetical thing. There are 32 states that already have legislation that's related to weather modification. 50 programs. The uh, U.S. agencies that are documented to be involved in it include the U.S. Air Force, the um, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA. the U.S. Department of the Interior, the National Science Foundation, and um, you know, I, I know China boasted about um, using cloud seeding and weather uh, changing uh, before the 2008 Olympics in order to keep the opening ceremony dry. So that this is happening is completely documented. It's just that you have to know where to look because it's look not up in the sky. on mainstream weather reports. And um, this is where it gets controversial, and it's, it's kind of weird, because even though it's factual that there are metals in the atmosphere, and factual that in those metals water, are falling to the ground, the soil. Um, when you acknowledge that, or question the legitimacy, or the legality, or the safety, or the morality, it becomes controversial. And really, that's sad because if you're questioning something that has such major impact on us and on future generations and on our planet, it seems to me that it should be one of the most natural and encouraged parts of life and education. Weather. Where is El Nino? Let's ask the geoengineers. Why has it not developed as we were told it would? The largest El Nino ever. Why has it not developed? And even though Redding has had, in the valley, has had close to its normal rainfall, we are not getting the normal exponential increases of rain in the mountain areas. It's not happening. Why is it, happen why is it not happening? Because of the level of particulates in the atmosphere. That changes the orographic enhancement effect, the effect of the mountains. So again, it's imperative that people study the climate engineering issue and understand its ramifications. More on that in a moment. The dirty, dingy, wispy, climate engineering particulate haze stripes solar radiation management cloud cover continues to be plastered in our skies on most days over northern california and elsewhere around the globe i hear from people all over the globe about this every single day Will our corporate controlled media be allowed to black out issues of critical importance that will come down to this it's up to us the citizens of northern california and elsewhere to picket in the parking lots until the people and institutions like KRCR and the record searchlight, our local newspaper, decide to stop blocking out critical stories and start telling the truth. Again, the weathermen at KRCR, to the weathermen, if you can't talk about the climate engineering issue, tell us. If that's not the case, why would you continue to avoid addressing this issue in any way, shape, or form, no matter how high the community concern grows? We would simply like to know, for example, how you know that the skies will be mostly sunny days in advance. And on such days, the only thing in the sky blocking the sun is what's coming out of the back of a jet aircraft passing overhead. How can a meteorologist predict jet sprayed haze blocking the sun days in advance? Unless they're in fact reading from a script perhaps by the National Weather Service or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Both of these government organizations have all their weather predictions modeling done by Raytheon, a massive private defense contractor. For our government, 
that's neck deep in climate engineering patents. Are, are meteorologists simply reading scripts? Why won't they address public concerns? It's to believe weather warfare is going on over your head every single day, stand by. As I said before, you'll believe it soon enough. In regard to the ongoing climate engineering assaults, the question of why, of course, and understandably perplexes those that have not yet taken the time to investigate. Why is our climate being engineered? Though the answers are many and complex, the condensed version is this, for power and control. It's always about power and control. Investigate the U.S. document titled Owning the Weather. The full PDF is available online. Investigate the congressional documents, the presidential documents, the patents, the history of weather warfare and weather modification. It's all there for anybody who chooses to look. If you do so, you'll understand more. Then consider that after 70 years of weather warfare, tearing the climate system apart, and along with many other forms of anthropogenic damage to the biosphere, which many don't want to admit to, all of them impacting the climate system, much of the current geoengineering assault on our planet is for the purpose of masking the true damage already done to the climate system, while at the same time inflicting even more overall damage to the process. Again, this is the pharmaceutical mentality for planet Earth. How many examples do we have to see from the human race? This is, this is the mentality of our modern industrial society to very destructively try to treat symptoms while making the core of the problem far worse overall. This is the society we live in. Who we owe our lives to. All of us, especially those who have made the decision to have children, we don't own our lives. We owe them to our children and to all the children of the once thriving, now dying planet Earth. So how's the global economy doing? I've talked about this in previous shows, most shows. For those that are still blindly fixed on the global economic facade, forget about it and move on to something that matters. The notion of endless global economic expansion was always a complete delusion. And it's not collapsing in some sort of cyclical fashion at this time. It's collapsing in a manner from which it will not return. We are not in some sort of again, some sort of cycle that's going to somehow magically bounce back. As stated in previous episodes, the implosion of the biosphere and nature's ability to produce will guarantee the already unfolding economic meltdown. And here's a few recent headlines on that front that we don't see from our corporate mainstream media whose job it is to pacify us and put us to sleep. One headline, a whiff of panic Global meltdown progressing. Second headline, European bloodbath spills over to U.S. markets. Deutsche Bank and cocoa bonds collapse. Shares at record low. Another headline, European banks face major cash crunch. Another headline, day of reckoning. The collapse of the too big to fail banks in Europe is here. Another, fear hits Japanese banks. Nikkei plunges 10-year yield negative for first time ever. What's that mean? A negative yield. It means they're giving money away. They're paying you to take their money. This is the sign of a dying paradigm, absolutely in its death throes, negative yield rates. And we're about to enter the same territory in the U.S. It's coming. Another headline, capital flight intensifies in Italy and Spain. Curiously, money flows into French banks. People are scurrying for any sort of safe cover. Good luck finding it. Two more headlines, the return of a crisis. Suddenly, banks everywhere are in deep trouble. Final headline, Sears Holding Corporation, that's S-H-L-D, speeds up store closings after disappointing holiday season. Things are not rosy. We just have a massive population looking through rose-colored lenses. That's all. Trouble's not just coming, it's here. It's now. The downward slide will continue to accelerate on all fronts. 
No matter the season or occasion on the ground, the climate engineering fallout continues to rain a chemical cocktail of contamination down in the entire web of life. And I would ask again, how long can we hold our breath?